Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to talk about interval partitioning. And before going into the details, let me first give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. So first of all, we're going to describe the problem itself. After that, we're going to come up with a solution, and at the same time, we're going to do an example. Then we're going to give the pseudocode of our solution and do a time complexity analysis. And finally, we're going to prove our solution to the problem, and then we will prove that our solution to the problem is actually optimal. But let's first start with describing the problem. So imagine this. There are 10 lectures, each with a fixed start and end time. Then each lecture needs a lecture hall. Besides, there can only be one lecture and one lecture hall at the same time. And the most important thing is that you want to find a minimum number of lecture halls needed for scheduling all lectures. So imagine that this is a schedule and these are the lecture halls. These are the lectures which have an interval from, for example, for lecture three from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And at the bottom we see the timeline. So the thing is that you'd like a schedule that minimizes the number of lecture halls needed or in general the number of resources needed. Let's come up with some formal notation for this. So in a formal way, every lecture J starts at SJ and finishes at FJ. A lecture hall is compatible if there don't exist a lecture N and a lecture M in that lecture hall for which it holds that they overlap. And finally, the number of lecture halls needed is represented by H. So we see H here. This is the number of lecture halls that are needed. And then the question is, so what is the minimum number of lecture halls needed? Well, let's go into the solution of this problem. So the key to the solution in order to get the minimum number of lecture halls needed is to sort all lectures ascending on their starting time as j. So the first starting time is smaller or equal than the second starting time, and the second starting time is smaller or equal than the third, etc. etc. So that's what we are actually going to do. We're going to sort all these lectures on their starting time, and then for each lecture, we're going to check whether they need a lecture hall or whether there's already a lecture hall which is still compatible if we add this lecture to the lecture hall. So let's do an example for this. And this is the schedule that you've seen before. Now we're going to create a new schedule and check whether we can use less lecture halls while scheduling all lectures. So the lecture with the earliest starting time or the lectures with the earliest starting times are lecture one, lecture two and lecture three. But let's just start with lecture one. So since there are no lecture halls yet, we have to open up the first lecture hall and we're going to schedule lecture one into lecture hall one. So that's what we're going to do. There we go. Then let's take lecture two with the earliest starting time. Well, there is one lecture hall, but since it's not compatible with lecture two as lecture one is already scheduled and they will overlap, we're going to open up a new lecture hall and schedule lecture two into lecture hall two. So there we go. Now let's take the lecture with the early start time again. This is lecture three. Since lecture three overlaps with lecture one and with lecture two, we're again going to open up a new lecture hall and we're going to schedule lecture three into this lecture hall. There we go. Then the lecture with the earliest starting time is lecture four. So now we're going to get the lecture hall, which becomes available first. This is lecture hall one. And we do this because, well, if the lecture hall that becomes available first isn't compatible with this lecture, then it won't be with any other lecture hall since it's the first one and the, all the others will become available later on. So we check whether lecture hall one is compatible with lecture four and it actually is. So we're going to schedule lecture four to lecture hall one. There we go. Then the lecture with the early starting time is lecture five. For lecture five, we're going to have a look at the lecture hall that's available first. This is lecture hall two, and it is compatible with lecture five. So we're going to schedule lecture five in lecture hall two. There we go. Then the lecture with the early starting times are lecture six and lecture seven. Let's pick lecture six. Well, lecture six can be scheduled in lecture hall one. So we're going to do that. Lecture seven is then the next one with the earliest starting time we can schedule lecture seven in lecture three so we're going to do that then we're again going to pick the 
lecture that says the earliest starting time and we're going to check the lecture hall that becomes available first this is lecture hall 2 it is compatible with lecture hall 2 so we're going to assign it to lecture hall 2 there we go then the lectures with the earlier starting times are 9 and 10 let's select 9 lecture hall 1 is compatible with lecture 9 so let's schedule lecture 9 in lecture hall 1 Lecture 10 is then less lecture, so it's the lecture with the early starting time. And we're going to schedule it into the lecture hall that is available first, and this is lecture hall 3. So there we go. We have scheduled all lectures, and this is our solution. So this is the final schedule that we have. So the minimum number of lecture halls that is needed is actually 3 and not 5. And this thus requires less resources. That's why this algorithm is so useful. Let's now have a look at the pseudocode of the algorithm for actually implementing it. So the first thing we do in the pseudocode is that we're going to sort all lectures by their starting time so that the first starting time is smaller or equal than the second and the second is smaller or equal than the third, etc, etc. And we're going to use this order for the following. So we're going to initialize h by the value 0. Then for j is 1 to n, we're going to do the following. If some lecture hall k is compatible with lecture j, then we're going to schedule lecture j in lecture hall k. And if not, we're going to allocate a new lecture hall h plus 1. And we're going to schedule lecture j in this lecture hall h plus 1. And then we're going to increase the value of h by 1. And this is actually what we've done in the example before. So it seems quite easy. If there exists lecture hall k that's compatible with lecture j, we're going to assign this lecture to this lecture hall. And if not, then we're just going to create a new lecture hall. But there's still something that's a little vague because we're talking about some lecture hall k. This doesn't sound really efficient because this could mean that we're going to loop over all lecture halls. And this is obviously not something that we want to do. As I mentioned earlier, we're only interested in the lecture hall that becomes available first. So we can do something with this. And with this, I mean a priority queue. Because the priority queue can sort the lecture halls on the time that they become available. So at the front of this priority queue, there will be a lecture hall that becomes available first. And if we check whether it's compatible with this lecture J, then if it is, okay, we're going to assign lecture J to this lecture hall. And if not, then it won't with the others either. So this is also a very efficient way to do it. And also in terms of time complexity, because that's an important thing as well. So let's answer the following question then. Cool. But what's the running time of the algorithm? We don't want a slow algorithm. And well, we have already seen some efficient things in the algorithm. So let's just give a concrete answer to this. Well, the answer is as follows. The sorting of our lectures by the starting time costs n log n, because we can do it, for example, with merge short. Then we have a constant operation here. We also have a for loop from one to n. So this takes big O of n time. But within this for loop, there's also this if check, which involves the priority queue. And actually, this is going to take the big O of log n time, because whenever we are going to add something to the priority queue, or we're going to remove or change something, it will require a heapify operation, which takes, in the worst case, log n time. So since this happens, whenever we iterate through the loop, the sum of it, in worst case, will be the big O of n times log n. And since this is the big O of n times log n, and this is the big O of n times log n, the overall runtime complexity of the algorithm will be the big O of n log n. And actually, this is quite fast for this algorithm. So it's quite efficient in terms of time complexity, which is a good thing. But one thing we're interested in as well is that it's correct and that it's indeed optimal. We have shown that it is relatively fast by time complexity. But we also actually want to prove that it is correct and that it's optimal. So let's prove our solution to the problem. And before we can actually show that our solution is optimal, we're going to need two other theorems. And these theorems are easy to 
prove, so that's what we're going to do first. And for this, we're going to need the following definition. This definition is the depth. So define the depth of a set of intervals to be the maximum number that pass over a single point on the timeline. So for example, if we take our previous example, um, we're going to have a look at the points in time where we have the maximum number of overlapping lectures in a set of lectures. So for example, at 10 a.m. we have three lectures that overlap as well on 11 a.m. and on a lot of other points in time. But this is the maximum number of overlapping lectures and therefore it's the depth. So if we check it here, we have three lectures, three lectures here that overlap, etc., etc. So that's why the depth in this example is three. And that's actually also the minimum number that we showed with the algorithm. But that's something for later on. So the first theorem that I want to show together with you is this one. The theorem is in any instance of interval partitioning, the number of lecture halls needed is at least the depth of the set of lectures. And the proof for this is that suppose a set of lectures has depth D and let L1 to LD all pass over a common point on the timeline. Then each of these lectures must be scheduled in a different lecture hall. So the whole instance needs at least D lecture halls. This is also something we have seen earlier. So again, for this example, each of these three lectures needs a different lecture hall, else a lecture will overlap with another of these lectures in the same lecture hall and this is not something we want so therefore this theorem is correct and therefore we are allowed to say q e d then the second theorem that we're going to need is this one and with this one we're going to prove that the greedy algorithm is actually correct so the theorem is that the greedy algorithm never schedules two overlapping lectures in the same lecture hall and the proof for it is that consider any two lectures i and i prime that overlap suppose i precedes i prime in the sorted order then when i prime is given to the algorithm i is in the set of lectures whose lecture hall won't be compatible with lecture i prime. Consequently, the algorithm will not assign lecture i prime to the lecture hall that is used for i. And this is something we've seen in the pseudo code. If lecture hall k is compatible with lecture j, sure, then we're going to assign it. But if not, then we're going to assign a new lecture hall. And this is actually literally what we say in the proof. And as this holds for any combination of randomly chosen overlapping lectures, this holds for every combination of two overlapping lectures. So QED. Now that we have proved these two theorems, it's time to show that our solution is optimal. So here are the theorems again. And the theorem now is that the greedy algorithm for interval partitioning is optimal. And this is the proof. For this, we're going to use a structural bound. So what has to be proved is that if greedy allocates the lecture halls, then the depth is D. So greedy allocates the lecture halls. If that's the case, then the depth must be D. And D is the minimum amount of lectures as we've seen in theorem one because there need at least to be D lecture halls. So that's what we're going to prove. So the first important thing for the proof is that lecture hall D opened because lecture J overlapped with D minus one others. And since we sorted by start time, all these overlapping lectures are caused by lectures that start earlier than or at SJ. And thus we have D lectures overlapping at time SJ plus epsilon, where epsilon is very small. So just after we've assigned this new lecture hall, we have the overlapping lectures. And this holds whenever you open a new lecture hall. And consequently, also for the last one that is opened, thus, Greedy opens D lecture halls, and D is the minimum that we needed, based on theorem one. And that's what we had to prove. So Q, E, D. So as a conclusion, this Greedy algorithm is relatively fast, based on the time complexity analysis. It's correct. and it's optimal. So I think that's a nice way to end this video. We have described the problem both in particular and in general. Then we came up with a solution. We did an example and we solved it. Then we gave the pseudocode of the algorithm, including a time complexity analysis. And finally, we proved that the algorithm is correct and that it's optimal. So that's it. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like. If you still have any questions, please make sure to use the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.